Hey, what's going on guys? This is something that's really cool. This is a reproduction of a 1911 that would have been used in World War I. And this is a very authentic reproduction. Uh, this is made by Colt, and it was a limited reproduction. They are not currently making these anymore. So they're kind of hard to find, and they're pretty expensive. Uh, I got this one brand new for 1050 off a of gun broker. But the prices are going up, and they're getting really hard to find. Now this comes from Colt's Custom Shop, so it comes in a really nice blue cardboard box. All of Colt's regular production 1911s come in a blue plastic hard case, but anything from the Custom Shop like this comes in a nice blue cardboard box, so that's really nice. Uh, right here is your Colt logo. It says Colt's Manufacturing Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Just a really nice package, and the way this gun is shipped is very authentic. The gun is in a box inside of this box, and it's the exact way it would have been shipped back in World War I. And being as it's very authentic, the box has a serial number on it. So I've got to cover that up, because you guys don't need to see that. Now here's the box that actually comes in. It's just like the box they would have been shipped in back in World War I. And right here, it even comes with the... Uh, a very authentic manual just like it would have been shipped with so that's really nice and it even comes with your regular Colt manual it says Colt World War One reproduction pistol model M1911 alright this is an M1911 it's not the 1911A1 the 1911A1 was the World War II model and this is a M1911 so this is the World War One model um, even the print on the box is very authentic. Uh, the serial number, and then there's a WW1 at the end of the number. That just shows it's a reproduction. And then right here it says one pistol, automatic 45 M1911, two magazine assembly, and Colt's Patent Firearms Manufacturing Company, Hartford, Connecticut. So even the box and the print is very authentic. And it even comes with the original type of brown wax paper, just like they would have been shipped with. Everything about this package and the gun is very authentic, which is really cool. And then this is exactly how it would have looked when it came to the troops back in World War I. Uh, you get two seven round magazines, and you have a spare one right here wrapped in brown wax paper, and then the other one's in the gun. It's a very authentic pistol. Now this is pretty much exactly what the gun would have looked like when it first came out and during World War I. All the features, all the roll marks are exactly how they would have been. And here's the magazine it comes with. Uh, the follower is a very traditional type of follower. It's like the original design. It's very authentic. Okay. The barrel's blued, and the barrel hood is blued, and the finish on the gun itself is called a black oxide finish. It's the exact same finish they used on these guns back in World War I. So the finish is very authentic, and it's beautiful. I love it. Uh, all the roll marks are the same. Right here it says model of 1911 U.S. Army. Uh, the barrel, it says Colt 45 Auto. You have your serial number and there's a WW1 at the end of the number and then on this side uh, you have the patent dates you have the Colt address here on the frame it says United States property and then you have your Colt horse at the rear of the slide right behind the serrations and then right here I think this is called the inspector mark or inspector stamp something like that uh, it's the letter M with a circle and that's the same mark these pistols would have had back in World War One very authentic. Uh, even the grips, the walnut grips with the double diamond and the uh, checkering, very authentic. It's exactly how it would have looked. Uh, and even all the features of it, um, the high ejection port, the sights, they're very low profile sights. Uh, they can take a while to get used to if you're really used to uh, white dot sights or raised sights. Uh, it has an extended trigger and it's smooth. The mainspring housing is flat and it's also smooth. There's no checkering or serrations. 
um, there's your lanyard loop and the magazine well has no beveling on it it's just a straight cut just like it would have been uh, the hammer is pretty wide it's a little bit different than the hammer on the 1911A1 and here's your standard thumb safety uh, your standard slide release your standard magazine release and even the screws uh, they're flathead screws okay very original uh, the bushing is original the same type of bushing the uh, takedown plug that's what I call it the takedown plug and I've shot this gun I've shot it about maybe 150 rounds to 200 rounds somewhere in there I don't shoot it that much because I want to keep it in really nice shape uh, but I do shoot it you know once in a while but the only wear on the gun is here on the ejection port on the barrel of the hood uh, the bluing right here is starting to rub off a little bit but that's normal everywhere else on the gun is in perfect shape alright it has a very smooth action on it and of course I keep it lubricated but it's a very smooth action I love it and the tolerances are very tight as well if you cock the hammer and try to rock the slide back and forth there's no movement it's a really nice pistol and the trigger pull is very crisp it's a very accurate pistol once you get used to the sights uh, it's, it's a pleasure to shoot it really is and it's very comfortable in the hand it feels very natural and for me I like a 1911 with the extended trigger and the flat mainspring housing I feel like I have more trigger control um, for me it just feels better, it feels more natural and this is the original design so that's really nice I love it it's one of my favorite 1911's and the machine work is beautiful there's no flaws there's no machine marks or anything all the lines are straight absolutely no defects it's really nice and I will shoot this more but like I said I don't shoot it too much uh, because I do like to keep it in really nice shape because uh, you, you really don't see these too much they're kind of I don't know if they're rare but you really don't see them too often it was a limited reproduction so they are kind of a, a collector's gun uh, but the next video that I make will be on my Colt 1911 Series 70 and that is pretty much a World War II version of it because it's a 1911A1 I know it's not really a World War II reproduction like this is this is a World War I reproduction but the Series 70 is a 1911A1 so that's what I use for my World War II version of the 1911 so I'll be doing a video on that one next and I'll be showing you guys the differences they're very similar but there are differences and then after that I, may, I might make a video comparing the two in the same video but there it is there's the World War I 1911 this is the M1911 the same version they used in World War I it's a great pistol it's a great piece of history